As a member of the GitLab Community Relations Team, the GitLab for Education program is close to my heart. GitLab for Education has issued more than 1 million seeds to educational institutions in 65 countries, whether for research, teaching code, hosting student portfolios, or improving the grading and review process for educators, program members are finding new and innovative ways to apply and teach DevOps in the classroom. I'm thrilled to have Robin Manuel from Harriet Watt University here to share what they've learned while using GitLab, including when their classroom went virtual this year. On top of sharing how they're using GitLab across four global campuses, they will also share some of the open source tools they've built to scale the practices they're applying in their classrooms. Enjoy. Hi, welcome to our presentation, uh, GitLab Uses in the Making. And we're gonna talk about the use of GitLab to support programming education at Harriet Watt. I'm Rob Stewart, and I'm presenting today with Manuel Marwick, my colleague. We're going to cover why we introduced GitLab back in 2018 into our computer science education, what we use it for, how we've implemented a GitLab architecture, and what the outcomes have been since its introduction in 2018. Let's start, first of all, with why we introduced it. In higher education, computer science is a, a growth area, and that's driven by the needs for graduates in areas like data science, AI, and cybersecurity. And at the same time, there's another trend for higher education institutes to become global campuses, which is to set up campuses in other places around the world. Harriet Watt University is consistent with both of these trends. We now teach computer science in the Edinburgh campus, which is where we are, the Dubai campus, Malaysia campus, and with a partner, Ocean University in China. Moreover, our undergrad numbers are increasing. So when we introduced GitLab in 2018, our undergrad number was 240. And so we need a system in 2018 that would allow us to become a global campus, as well as meet the needs of our growing student numbers. So the aims that we had when thinking of employing GitLab is to scale to these campuses to ensure that assessment at scale with our growing numbers remains efficient, to encourage the feedback amongst students with one another on their coding skills, enable lab helpers to be more effective by giving them mechanisms for formative feedback, as well as to train our students with DevOps skills to prepare them for industry. So the question we asked is, can we use GitLab for an online learning environment to meet these aims? And so what, was, uh, what did we use GitLab for um, is um, what I'm gonna be explaining to you. Um, so the first thing is uh, we've started, um, we've transitioned to teaching um, development, software development using test-driven development. So what we wanted was a platform that was, uh, would assist us uh, with this, uh, with the intention that the students would get faster immediate feedback on their code and their testing, and also reduce the marking time. The second thing that we, we wanted uh, GitLab for was a way to be able to help and assist students and give them feedback on their code uh, using a platform uh, that facilitates interaction around code. Um, this idea was to improve the feedback on programming and to actually close also the feedback loop uh, with this intention that um, using a web-based system rather than email exchanges um, would facilitate uh, keeping track of a discussion with the students and enabling an asynchronous uh, interaction with the student. And so that's uh, the, the mechanism uh, that we see here is in both direction, the, the teacher being able to look at the code that the student have committed if they commit early and often, um, and the student being able to ask for help uh, throughout the week uh, and getting help from uh, lecturers as well as assistants. Another aspect that we were keen to explore with GitLab was to uh, be able to use peer feedback on programming. 
um, having a platform such as GitLab uh, facilitates this uh, management of peer feedback. And we've done uh, different, we took a different approaches to peer feedback. Uh, the first one, we used a peer code review using um, a review mechanism with issues uh, in GitLab and templates where students would um, look at the quality of each other's submission and comment. And the other one using not just uh, reviewing, but also the result of tests, so the peer testing that would allow students to run the tests uh, that they would have prepared on their peers' code. And this uh, was very effective because it stimulates the student to actually uh, pre prepare better their code, uh, but also see how their peers are doing and, and then exchange with their peers uh, and benefits in both direction uh, with this peer feedback mechanism. So we use templates for that for uh, peer code reviews. Um, and for peer testing, what we've used is a separate platform that would uh, run the test, but then the, the, that would um, uh, present uh, anonymous discussion around uh, test runs. But the notification and the run of tests would then be managed by GitLab. So these are the three main features that we wanted GitLab for, test-driven development, web-based feedback and lab helping, and also uh, peer interactions. So now let's take a look at how we implemented a GitLab architecture to support those objectives. For a typical university course with uh, programming education, we have a group of students, we have uh, a teacher, a lecturer, and some lab helpers. There'll be starter code that the students are given and they work on on their own. There'll also be model solutions to these labs that the teachers have as a basis for guiding students with their formative feedback. So how do we map this typical scenario into the GitLab uh, infrastructure? So what we do at Heriot Watt is create a group for each course that we teach. And within that group, we create three subgroups. The first subgroup is for students, and we add the student users as members to that subgroup. We also place the starter code into those subgroups, into the student subgroup. The second subgroup is where teachers live. We add them as members, so lecturers and lab helpers, and that's where we put the solution code projects as projects into that subgroup. They are private projects, so they're not available to the students to see. And the last subgroup is for lab helpers. We add the lab helpers members of that subgroup, and we add that subgroup as a member of student forks. This allows the lab helpers to see student code and provide feedback on that code when asked. And this scales for multiple courses. So that's one course, but to have another software development course is just a case of creating another GitLab group. So this allows us to facilitate multiple courses within one GitLab instance. So the first thing the student will do is go to one of these starter projects in the student subgroup and then click fork to create their own version of that project. Provided that they commit early and often, as we encourage the students to do, lab helpers and lecturers can see the progress of each and every student. They can see what they're working on and when, and they can also see the progress according to the unit tests. So they can see when a student has satisfied the requirements of the project according to the tests that have been automatically run by GitLab's continuous integration. Using GitLab's dashboard, we can also view across all students how the entire class is progressing with each of their labs. So for a given lab, how many students have forked it and how many have made progress and how many haven't yet forked it. So we can see the progress that are being made, the active students, and, and more or less how many of the students have completed the lab by passing all of the unit tests in each of the lab projects. For that architecture to work, there's various GitLab events that need to take place. For example, adding student users to the student subgroup, adding lab members to student projects, removing merge requests that students might create to avoid plagiarism. And all of these actions require intervention. And so that would be laborious, somewhat error prone, and it really doesn't scale to, to hundreds of people in a particular class. So we've developed 
at Harriet Watts on GitLab software, which allows us to automate those things by taking the human out of the loop, both teachers and students. The software is based on a Haskell library that we've developed, which allows developers to, to write GitLab programs and as, as well as GitLab system hooks. The library itself comprises functions to orchestrate a GitLab server, as well as data types in which GitLab data will be stored. Things like information about users, commits, and repositories. So here's an example of a program, a GitLab program written using this library. Very simple program. It looks up a user according to their username, and then it looks for all of the projects that that user has created. For each of those projects, it looks up all of the issues and it returns the project with the issues. So if you can read that type signature at the top of this program, this is a program that returns a list of projects for a given user and for each project, a list of issues. One of the things that we've developed using the library is a package called GitLab Tools. GitLab Tools allows you to perform bulk, tran bulk transactions on a GitLab server. For example, at the start of semester, adding all student users to a course group on GitLab. It also has a feature that extracts source code from a GitLab server and submits it to MOS, the plagiarism detection tool, to identify any possible plagiarism between different students. It also allows you to download repository archive files for all forks of a given project. The other thing that the library features is a, a high-level API allowing you to write type-safe system hooks in GitLab. It's a very simple API and it allows you to pattern match on certain events that take place on the GitLab server in real time. Events such as project creation, an update to a repository, uh, a new user being added to the GitLab server. We use this API to automate those things I mentioned earlier adding lab helpers to a student fork as soon as the fork is created, deleting a merge request as soon as it's added. Also adding students to multiple course groups as soon as that user creates an account on GitLab. It's important to know though that this API is far more general than a use case uh, for education. This API can be used for a wide variety of different use cases, anything for which real-time event-driven uh, GitLab programs would find useful. Here's an example of a rule with this uh, event-driven API. This is a, a rule that pattern matches on the event of project creation. And the predicate for checking if to fire this rule is for the created project, if the path of the project is called lab six, then the event that will be fired is to add the group called lab helpers to, to that event, so to that project. Very simple rule. They can be more complicated according to your needs. It's just a case of writing uh, more Haskell using the, the, the GitLab library. But from that previous example, this is in the website what, what happens. So when a student creates a fork, the lab helpers are added as reporters, allowing them to, to view the code. But then beneath that, you can see the student is using the at all tag, and that sends a message to all members of the project, which are of course the lab helpers. They'll, the lab helpers will receive an email with the question and directing them to go back to the website to answer the question close to the code about which the question is being asked. So the, the software stack for this library, it lifts the REST API from GitLab into functions and types at the Haskell level. It allows you to generate system hook executables. Above that, you can write programs and system hook executables. So we've used the library to build the GitLab tools batch job uh, package, as well as system hooks for the programming courses that we teach at Harriet Watt. But we would hope that other people can come and use the Haskell library for writing their own GitLab programs and their own GitLab system hooks. The open source philosophy that GitLab has very much aligns with the ethos and values at, at Harriet Watt. So we've open sourced this Haskell library, allowing other developers to use it. So now I'm going to talk you through um, the outcomes of using this uh, GitLab at Heritage in our teaching. 
And so, first of all, uh, some numbers. We've we've contacted students who have been involved using GitLab in their own courses this um, so this year, uh, 2020, 2021, and the positive response were overwhelming. Uh, the students really enjoyed uh, using uh, GitLab, and a vast majority believe that um, it's improved their way of uh, coding. Then from another point of view, we, we've estimated that um, we, we gain a lot marking time uh, used with the, the availability of automated marking, uh, automated uh, testing on GitLab. Um, so that, that was a gain. In terms of the, the, the scale of uh, using GitLab this year, so 2020, 2021, uh, we've been deploying it to 15 courses and uh, these are taught across uh, our four, three campuses plus one plus one partner institution. So this, uh, we, we looked at the numbers of projects that has been created for this academic year, and uh, this is the number we have, 13,000, a bit more. But the main thing for us was we started deploying and, and working with GitLab uh, a couple of years ago, and then the pandemic uh, arrived. And what was amazing to us is that with uh, having deployed GitLab as an online uh, lab, uh, computer lab facility, we, we were ready. We were ready, we were COVID ready before uh, when the pandemic hit. We were able to transfer uh, a lot, or if not uh, all of our computer lab ac activity online using GitLab, using the feedback mechanism uh, that Rob explained. Um, so this was we were in, intending to to have a um, teaching platform for coding that was uh, scalable uh, global we also had it uh, to be resilient and the students actually appreciated that a lot uh, we received a lot of feedback uh, positive on that aspect then what's what's the gain what's the benefit the main benefit for us um, I think, or for the student, is that they gain this experience of using an industrial uh, DevOps platform such as GitLab uh, from the moment they start uh, their their degrees with us. And uh, I've, the the feedback mechanism that the automated testing provides uh, helps them to actually gain confidence. They they can see the progress uh, by themselves. They can see where they're heading. Um, so all these, the, the practice uh, of, of coding, the practice of receiving uh, feedback very close to the code is highly beneficial to the students. Um, they are able to explain the problem they are having much is more easily because the code is there, the test runs are there. And our responses, our feedback, our help is far more uh, purposeful because it, we can rely on the code and the, the test. And of course, even without us setting things up, um, from day one when GitLab was uh, available to our students, they started to use it to create their, their own project to do some group works. So that, that's, that is something they, they took ownership uh, immediately. Then what are the benefits more um, if we look at the, the learning uh, aspects, so the, the point of view that uh, what we believe the students are gaining as well in terms of their learning. Um, the fact that we are able within a course to share some code, not just as text uh, in a document, um, but as actionable code that they can fork, that they can so openly access, but also that they can run is highly beneficial, especially with for students who have uh, disabilities. The, the code is available usually before the class, and so they are able to follow up uh, on, at their own pace. Um, the fact that we, we use this um, mechanism of feedback online means that the students don't need to wait for the next computer lab session in the room to get feedback. They can ask for the feedback throughout uh, the week uh, of teaching. So that reduces the time to wait for feedback. Um, and then, of course, with the automated testing um, that we provide for most of the, the programming projects, um, or labs, what they do is they, it offers an immediate feedback for the student. And what we could see immediately is how much this automated feedback and the, the, the red cross and, and green tick uh, were motivating students. Uh, and this so somehow uh, gives some gamification for free uh, to the learning process. 
Now, what's the benefit for the teaching team? Uh, this was uh, quite uh, important. One of the, the main things that we value a lot is with uh, this advice that we give to the student to commit early and commit often, we are far more able to follow up on uh, monitor the progress of the, the cohort. Um, then, it, of course, it provides us a way to share the code, uh, to give feedback more uh, meaningful. Um, it's, it's quite nice not to receive questions uh, from students on their codes by email, where you always have to go back and forth to ask for more details. Here, you have access to those details if you need. And then um, one of the very useful aspects of having commit early, commit often, is that we can see students working on their project. And we can spot uh, common misconception far more earlier. And then we, we could automate um, uh, feedback to the cohort uh, if needed uh, to capture, to, to, to explain better these, these issues that they might have. Uh, as we said, it shortens the, the time significantly. One of the main gain is the fact that um, the uh, GitLab offers a sort of benchmark of execution. Um, so there's a common platform where the code is run. So we don't have the issue where students and submit codes that only compiles on their machine because of the very specific versions that they're, they're using. Um, and then, of course, um, one, one of the benefits of providing the tests or asking students to write tests up front is that you, you have a much more transparent way of talking about the marking criteria uh, in these programming courses. So that's it for uh, our talk. Um, so we've explained uh, why we wanted to use GitLab, what we wanted to use GitLab for, um, how we've used it, in particular, how we've used a uh, statically typed uh, library for uh, interacting with the GitLab API. And, and then what was the outcome thus far? Uh, but we hope to uh, expand on a novel project to use GitLab in our teaching and learning. We're very excited about this work, so um, please get in touch. And here is the link to the library if you want to try it out. Thanks.